Welcome back to Good Morning Kenya. My name is Mike Miko. You are watching Transformative Leaders segment. Now, I want us to talk about something different, away from politics. Um, it's about the President Award Kenya, which celebrates uh, young achievers. And in this case, young achievers are between ages of 14 and uh, 24. And in studio, I'm joined by Nelly Ann Nyawera, who is a Gold Award holder and also a volunteer with the President's Award. Welcome to the program. Thank you. And also Bernard Ayako, who is a teacher and an award leader at Oshual Junior High School. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, also we are joined by Maria Birgen, who is the acting CEO, President's Award Kenya. Karibu sana. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us here. Yes, karibu sana. Let me start with you, CEO. So what is the President's Award and what does it entail? Okay, I will start by saying the President Award is a state corporation founded in 2017, 2017 through an act of parliament. We are domiciled under the Ministry of Youth, uh, Youth um, Creative Economy and Sports. Mm -hmm. And uh, we get our coronation mandate from the Duke of Edinburgh International Award. Mm -hmm. So let me just explain a little bit about the award and how the framework it operates. Rightly, you said we target young people between the ages of 14 and 24. That is the only requirement we have for you to join the program. So any young person can join this program regardless of their background. So how does this program operate? It is a self-development program and character building program for young people. So the program has got four sections and three levels. And we assess each of these sections. So the first section is the skills development. Mm -hmm. We're really encouraging young people to come up with a new skill, improve on a skill, and even through this journey, we find a lot of them find and discover new talents, and even they end up monetizing this in the future. Mm -hmm. Then we have another section which we call the physical recreation, where we expect young people to dedicate their time in physical activities of their choice. If they love f basketball, if they love football, they can do any of this. This is to improve their overall he health and well-being. Your body is always important for you, so we need to maintain our bodies, and this has a direct impact also on their mental well-being. Another section we have is the community service. Now the community service is very important in the award because it takes the attention from young people on self and to their community. Mm -hmm. There's always somebody out there in your community that you can help. So we really encourage young people to dedicate time to their communities. They can volunteer in a school, they can volunteer in a home, whatever option they want to choose. They can even volunteer to help another student in need. So we really encourage that. Then we have the last section which is called the adventurous journey. The adventurous journey is where we really encourage encouraging young people to push their resilience and they go through a hiking uh, a process where they identify a mountain they want to hike. Some have gone to Mount Kilimanjaro, others have gone to Mount Kenya, Mount Logonot, whichever they prefer to do. And the purpose of this uh, adventurous journey is to push them to their limits, for them to discover they are limitless, nothing can stop them. So those are the four sections within the award. And then we have one section that's only exclusive to the gold level. Remember I talked about we have got different levels. So we've got the bronze level which takes about six months we've got the silver level which takes 12 months and then we've got one year uh, um, two years which is the gold level and that's the highest level of the program which is a gold which takes two years of commitment okay mm -hmm. speaking of uh, gold level and gold award Nelly you have you have been awarded by the level of the gold award and you also volunteer with the, the president's award first of all how did you get into it and how has the journey been so far? Okay, thank you so much for that question. So how I got to know about the award, I was in high school. And uh, I remember growing up, I used to be a timid and a shy girl coming from a background of not so good background. So how it was presented to me as an opportunity to have my voice, that is what uh, brought the interest into the into joining the award because it was like you will have to do things that you love doing in the skill section we have the community service and in high school now you get those community services used to be done out outside so it was an opportunity for me to not be in the school like every other time yes. and uh, yeah it, it was so interesting because it, it created a space that I was able to be seen mm -hmm. and to be heard yes. and uh, through that uh, going through the four sections, the adventurous journey, it has uh, built me in terms of resilience, mm -hmm. overcoming a mountain, hiking, and you've never thought of even taking a walk from your school gate to home, and it brought a lot of resilience in me. And um, when it comes to the skill section, 
I was able to identify a skill that I didn't know that I have, which is coding. And uh, I got to nurture it through trying and uh, uh, trying many other skills. I tried uh, singing. I didn't have the vocals. <laughs> I went to the chemistry labs for projects. I didn't have outstanding ideas. Mm -hmm. And when I got to the computer lab and I was able to see, ah, Kumbe can write something. And uh, the teacher was able to commend me on that. And the fact that it was so progressive, mm -hmm. I was able to tap into that. And I have ran with it to even the career that I'm currently studying in Kenyatta University, which is a Bachelor of Education, Computer Science and Mathematics. So mm -hmm. I would say it has been a progressive journey from being a timid and shy girl to a self confident lady who is outspoken. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about the aspect of uh, interpersonal skills? Uh, in the as aspect of interpersonal skills, um, I would say I wasn't, I didn't know that I could be empathetic until when I, I would visit prisons and children's home. I would see people um, in their needs and uh, I didn't know what lacking is in terms of you can go hungry for so many days you can you are in prison you can't see your family members and that brought a lot of empathy within me and uh, when it comes to uh, my own personal skills in terms of leadership i have learned it from president's award i was given the role to be a chair person in high school i would run the uh, on online record book uh, system in my school because i was a computer student so through that I was able to, I would be able to interact with my students in terms of teamwork, following up with, with their progress, and that brought a lot of management skills and uh, planning my time. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Bernard, take us through the journey of uh, becoming an award leader because you are involved in this award and also you are, um, the journey, how has it uh, been? Thank you, Mike. Now, uh, first of all, an award leader is is a member of staff, usually a teacher, yes. who like coordinates the activities of, the, of their program in the institution. We call it an award center. And uh, I, I, I became an award leader by, more by default than by, by design, yeah. uh, um, because I was in an institution where there was a big name about PA, like it's, it's like a culture in our school. Mm -hmm. So uh, they used to say, who wants to go for expeditions? You heard about the expeditions, the yeah. mountains. And I like mountains. And I like outdoors, so mm -hmm. I just used to sign up for it. Yeah. Um, but uh, a time came when uh, the person who was the award leader had to go for further studies. So it fell upon me. I was just, I was just told, could you uh, take this uh, up? And uh, it was a big challenge for me, because at that time I had not uh, so much got involved into the nitty gritty mm -hmm. of, the, of the award. So I had to, I had to learn, learn very quickly. I, I did a crash program for yeah. myself. <laughs> so within two or three weeks, I had to know the, the details and uh, the main issues about the, about the, about the, about the program. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and then I realized that there's so much more than I knew about that. Because the more you get involved, the more you, you learn the impact. Mm -hmm. And the more you realize that you can actually offer much. Uh, so I, I took it wholeheartedly. And uh, I, 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 fortunately, I got other teachers uh, who are also vo volunteers. Because you have to volunteer for this. Yeah. You, 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 you can't just pick it up like that. So I have a, a good team right now. And uh, through the, the like three, going to three years now that I've been uh, the award leader at, at Oshwal, I've seen the impact of this, even to me as, as a person, as a mm -hmm. teacher. And, and, that's, and, that's, and that's, that's the journey, in short. I, I think if you had a whole day, I would mm -hmm. take you through the details. <laughs> because it's, it's <laughs> just, a just a little bit of how it has impacted you. Uh, but, uh, but for me, I feel that I'm, 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 I'm offering more. I'm seeing the, the work of my hands. Mm -hmm. Because as a teacher, basically as a teacher, you see the infl influence that you have on, yeah. on students through the teaching of your subject, through outdoor, you know, out, out of class activities. And they say that a teacher's influence cannot be, you know, limited. Mm -hmm. But through a PA, I've got another level of, of service. And I feel that uh, my, the work that I'm doing, every single minute, every single hour I give uh, in, I see the impact directly. Mm -hmm. And of course, th th these people, the, the people I'm dealing with are between the age of 14 and 16 yeah. in our school. And this is the, these are the impressionable years. So of course, I know that uh, if I can see the impact in two years, and this person is getting to late teenage, then of course, these are things that will last. Because now you see, you're going to have this impacting him 
and, and the generation to come. So, so personally, I, I see a lot of uh, benefit to me in terms of the impact I'm having. Mm -hmm. Of course, I also get to work out by default. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, and I think that those, those are benefits I can see, like I, I can tell you, yes. that, that anybody should just pick up. What about, what about the students that are within now this program? What can you say has been the impact so far? I'm glad you asked that, uh, because uh, right now I, I have 244 students wow. who are registered online. You know, we have something called online record book, mm -hmm. where we monitor the activities they are doing. And I can tell you uh, that I have seen, the short time I've seen students, like uh, uh, Nelly mentioned timid, timidity. Somebody who is timid, who cannot actually stand in front of people, mm -hmm. and is able to, through the program, is able to actually uh, impact others by, by giving instructions, by being a leader. And, and I can see that that's one thing. Mm -hmm. You can see it directly. Um, there's also the aspect of discipline. Yeah. I think that's, mm -hmm. a, that's, for me, that's very big. Yes. Because um, you realize without discipline, you can't have, you can't have anything, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, for students, it's actually very important. I don't need to, to overemphasize that point. Yeah. But, but, but and I can tell you that uh, through uh, the program, I've seen students who, let me not say um, indisciplined, but students that you wish were more disciplined. And I've seen them moving from, uh, to a place where they, they actually students that you can model, that you can give examples uh, uh, about, students that you can refer because they are now they are able to be more responsible uh -huh. in class and out of class. Yeah. And basically, as a teacher, if, if, if I have more disciplined students in class, uh -huh. then, then, then the, the, the task is halfway done, because then I'm able to get their attention, I'm able to impact them through the teaching. Yeah. And that happens through the program. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Maria, how many schools have you onboarded, and how do you, ensure, how do you onboard them? Okay, so we've onboarded over a thousand uh, public institutions and public schools. We've onboarded about 400 private schools. We're about 11 bosols. Remember, we say we go anywhere the young people, so yes. we are mm -hmm. a community based um, organizations. We are about 12 of them, mm -hmm. and also faith based organizations. We want to expand that. We're about eight of them. So, one of the most we really levels. Mm -hmm. The most important thing for this program is for us, we want to touch every young person in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Our target is hopefully we can get mm -hmm. of 14 to 20 to expand our program special schools. We do not limit perspective of any might have. So we also have enrolled this program. We are also working very as communities doing the program. Mm -hmm. So and impact on these young people. Mm -hmm. A global program. We have over 120 doing this program. So we are also bringing these young people into a global platform. Mm -hmm. We are making them realize your we actually encourage a change in mentality. Mm -hmm. That is one of the most important thing about this program. We want young people to know that you can go beyond what you can imagine. Yes. When we were talking of off camera, we are, you are telling enhancing their employability. Yes. Talk, talk a little bit yes, more yes. about that. So, like she had talked about the skill section, where we're encouraging young people to develop a new skill. Mm -hmm. And also remember, it's character building, and yeah. also encourages soft skills. So, we prepare young people, even as early as being prepared, not only for also employability, I'll also talk about entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Because you find young people develop program and they discover even talents. Mm -hmm. Remember they can do anything they want in this program. So you have some young people who can even pick up an instrument and you find that that is how they even get into the space of the creative economy in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So we really encourage that. So employability and entrepreneurship skills are really harnessed in the skills section of, of the award. Yes. yes. Nelly, how can you say this has shaped your future aspirations? Uh -huh. That's a good question. Okay, when it comes to my future aspirations, mm -hmm. I see myself as a leader. I see myself giving back to the community. I see myself helping people to tap into who they are mm -hmm. in terms of mental wellness. I have been able to do that as a volunteer. Uh, I have been a participant for four years in high school and a volunteer in five year, for five years in my campus life. And uh, through that, I have realized that I am so interested in helping people to know who they are. Because uh, in campus, I have seen PA, President Hawa, that is, mm -hmm. being a space where young people are running away from things. 
you, you see someone is like, ah, oh, we're going for a hike, let's just go. I have so many other things that I want to clear off my mind. Mm -hmm. And through that, I, I, I have developed that urge of helping people to tap into who they are. I have seen first years getting into baking and uh, making money out of it to run their needs in campus. Mm -hmm. I have seen uh, participants that I have volunteered to assess. Um, just get to discover themselves and that has given me a lot of satisfaction. Yes. So through the award I see myself as a leader in terms of how I take my, the opportunity to run with someone in terms of developing them, helping them to get to nurture themselves, their skills. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it comes to my interactions, I have created a lot of networks. Mm -hmm. I, I have done Bachelor of Education. so. Walimu yes. Kondani. So it, PA has helped me. I wonder what kind of a teacher I would be yeah. with my shyness that I had before I joined the award. So that has brought a lot of networking mm -hmm. and it has helped me because you see when, when I went for my teaching practice, it was easy. I am a president award gold award holder. So so you know it boosted yeah. your self confidence. Yeah, it boosted my self confidence and also it has created job opportunities when it comes to my web development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also get to visualize myself being an IT expert in the future. Bernard, having interacted with the, these students, of course, and also as an uh, award leader, what would you say is the role of parents in all this? Well, uh, first of all, let me be, uh, offer my gratitude to whoever impacted Nelly to become a teacher. Yes. Because <laughs> teachers influence society. Uh, talking of parents, like I said earlier, my students in, in, in junior high, yeah. we have students up to year 11, that is around the age of 16. Mm -hmm. And so basically they are not adults, so somebody has to take them through this in terms of, um, uh, you know, this, this program also has uh, financial implications okay. in terms of support, registration even, mm -hmm. uh, because there is a registration fee, a little fee, a token fee, just to register you on, 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 online. And then, of course, these activities are not are just free. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, people have to get involved away from home. So uh, the parents play a very important role in this. They have to offer the financial support to these people. Okay. And uh, uh, also, apart from that, they are still, they're still children of their parents, yeah. so they, they have not abdicated that role uh -huh. as parents. So it, parents also have a bigger challenge because apart from what they already plan for their children, they have, they have to bring PA on board. Uh -huh. and, and, and that's why also what we do in school is we, we, we have awareness uh, meetings with parents so that they know their role. Because without the parents, we can't, we can't have this. Uh -huh. I actually usually tell them that the first two letters of parents is PA. <laughs> because the parents are very important uh, cog in this and we bring them on board very strongly because uh, apart from that also they, they, they support us in terms of expeditions very very strongly um, they also play the role of uh, awareness uh, ambassadors in the community like uh, most some of the parents we have have heard about PA from other parents friends uh, colleagues at work and all that mm -hmm. so so, so in, uh, uh, for that reason we have um, we, we consider them as very important stakeholders uh -huh. as far as PA is concerned in our school. Yeah. And I think all parents can take this because the, the key thing for me is awareness. If, if somebody is aware and tells somebody else, it doesn't have to be a participant or a teacher mm -hmm. or a member of staff, yeah. but out there in the community. Yes. Because at the end of the day, the impact that you had being mentioned mm -hmm. still impact the community. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if the community is aware of what's happening, they are more receptive, yeah. they're able to, to to supply these participants because they come from the community mm -hmm. and therefore parents are the key here and so they help a lot and that's uh, that's very important because also in terms of discipline which i mentioned it's a, it's a very dear thing to me mm -hmm. uh, discipline has to be uh, like multifaceted we can't just have discipline in school and not at home mm -hmm. so it actually uh, flows we support each other in terms of discipline mm -hmm. and and so when i i say that i've seen uh, people grow in discipline it is actually because parents have played a role somewhere. Yeah. Yes. What would you say has been the impact of this program now in terms of um, academic performance? Because here we are awarding something that is outside the world, the academic environment. Have you seen students within the program improve in terms of their academics? Well, I, 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 if you ask the other way around, mm -hmm. I, would, I would have a lot to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that uh, uh, do students 
get affected by doing PA. Uh -huh. But now that you mentioned the, the, the influence of PA in academics, or the fact that they can coexist, yeah. I can tell you, first of all, that some of the most active participants that we have mm -hmm. have actually ended up topping the exams in school. Uh, I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say it's only through a PA. Of course, they work hard. But as a teacher, you know, uh, basically, I'm first of all a teacher yes. at Oshal. Yeah. I, I, I was hired as a teacher. So uh, being a PA award leader is uh, secondary. So of course, I'm so much interested in how the students perform. That's the bread and butter thing for me. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I can say that uh, through PA, through the responsibility you've mentioned, people are more, uh, are, are more responsible. They take more responsibility for themselves, which includes their time. So uh, even in terms of studying, somebody is able to plan their time well and allocate time for all these other things because they're also uh, human beings with all these all this, uh, uh, facets. They're not just students. They're able to balance their time such that they're able to study and study well after working out there or doing whichever activity they have. Because as you heard Nelly saying, self-confidence. It builds self-confidence. Mm -hmm. So you're able to know what you're studying. You're even able to approach teachers uh, in case you have an issue. Because some of the issues we know as teachers is that students might be afraid to come for help. But somebody who is confident will actually approach you, knowing exactly what they, are, what they want to be, uh, to, help, to be helped in. Mm -hmm. And therefore, there's one or two or three more marks added there. And with the time, you find that these people are more responsible, and therefore, the performance is seen. So I can tell you right now, uh, at Oshawa at least, because mm -hmm. that's where I've done my small research, mm -hmm. that PA has a very positive impact on their academic performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, how, how are these uh, programs managed in, in schools? Is, is, this, is it the prerogative of the school or the PA has a way that the program has to be run within schools? Well, uh, the program, we do a coordination, obviously, with the schools or any institutions that we work with. Mm -hmm. So we, first of all, one of the most important things, once we register a school and we onboard them into the program, we start mm -hmm. by training them. Mm -hmm. So we take the schools and we train them on how to deliver the award. Mm -hmm. And then number two, what we do after, once we train this uh, teachers, award leaders, we actually call them award leaders, mm -hmm. we start uh, now encouraging the young people to start doing the program. So remember we said the program, we have to log in your activities. Remember it's evidence based also the program. We should be able to see what these young people are doing. So if a young person has say they'll develop a skill in mathematics. We want to see them progressing. Mm -hmm. So we have two ways in which we do it. We have something called the online record book, mm -hmm. where they go online and they log in their activities and they log in their pictures to show that this is what I've been doing and this is the commitment I've done and how long you've done it. You can do it on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. They dedicate time to this award program of the skill section. Mm -hmm. Then we have the physical recreation. They do the same thing. They log in these activities. Mm -hmm. And then also we have the community service. Mm -hmm. The adventurous journey is a one-off. So they will log that as well on the online platform. Now, obviously, not all institutions have the provision of an ICT infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So what we do, we give another option, which we call the manual record book, where now we take to schools where they would log in their activities and mm -hmm. also their evidence attached to the manual record book. Mm -hmm. And then the teachers, so for every school, the there's the award leader and also the award leader has coaches and mentors. So if a student decides I want to undertake piano, mm -hmm. the award leader can say, oh, the, uh, the piano teacher will be the mentor of this young person. Yes. So you see the award leader is also going to work with a mentor for this young person. So this mentor will mentor the young person and then the award leader will be in charge of the first level of assessment to ensure that the program is being done as per the framework. Mm -hmm. It's very important for us to stick with the framework of the program and that's how we get our outcomes okay. and the benefits of the program. Okay. Then after that, our regional coordinators, we say we are an all council counties, they now also assess and approve the processes of what they've done. Mm -hmm. Now, if they successfully complete every level, we award and recognize these young people. Uh, the award program is intentionally meant to be challenging. It's intentionally meant to push their boundaries. So it's also very important for us to recognize these young people. So we award them on the different levels, the bronze, the silver, and the gold level. So we award each level for the young people. How is assessment done for this? The assessment. Mm -hmm. we, like I said, they have to log in their activities. It's yes. evidence-based. So we end up going on the online record book and looking at the activities they've logged. Also, we pay a visit to the schools and interact with the students. You should be able to see the outcomes. You will see the impact. Mm -hmm. Remember, we talked about the soft skills, how they behave. You'll be actually, if you go to a school, you will know this is a PA student. So that's another way we assess, because we also have to go on the ground and also see how the award is, is, is continuing. Another very important thing we play is also we continuously support 
their ward leaders and the schools. We have to continuously support them. We also have online trainings that we encourage them to log on so that they can also improve the quality and delivery of the program because at the end of the day, the most important impact is to these young people that are doing the program. Mm -hmm. yes. Nelly, what can you say are the life uh, lessons that you have learned throughout this program? Um, interesting. Life lessons. Dealing with money is the first thing that I've learned through the award. <laughs> hey, my, our leader was so engaging yeah. uh, when it comes to how he, uh, he used to run the program in my school. So you'd find you're a Form 1 student, you have to sit with a Form 4 student, discuss on the meals that you want to have, where you want to go, the activities you want to do, and come up with a budget. Mm -hmm. That was a skill that has been life-changing because you now you have to account for every money that you get from every student yeah. and you have to show how it was uh, used throughout the activities that were throughout the term and um, another thing that I've learned is um, how to relate with people uh, and uh, this has shown in my interactions through assessing the young participants and also the ones that we are on the same level with in campus mm -hmm. and uh, it has improved i can i can say confidently that i can easily interact with anyone because if it's the low level uh, or mind oriented person i have learned and i have actually come to learn that everyone has something that they can do you you can't you can't judge someone's achievement based on academics ama a skill Everyone has something that they can do. That has also shifted my mindset on how I interact with people. Mm -hmm. And another thing that I would say um, President Award has helped me with is my leadership. I honestly give credit to the award on how I manage myself and how I plan myself. I'm in campus. On weekends, I have the freedom to go party and do other things. But even my... Co cosmates they know because yeah. it's either we are swimming you know going hiking in the labs helping those that want to perfect on their computer skills those that are because we also have participants that have joined their ward mm -hmm. to find their mental stability so we have people that are recovering from being drunkards people that are going through heartbreak you know yeah. <laughs> she's a comrade <laughs> yeah so you find being in those spaces you, you just have things running in your life mm -hmm. and you're engaged mm -hmm. as a young person. That, I would say, that also has been shaped by so the to program. So there's uh, a sense of personal responsibility. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, a high sense of personal responsibility. Okay. Now, Bernard, talk about the challenges that you identify in running this uh, program, uh, especially in your place of work. Well, um, of course, you know that there must be a few challenges here and there. Mm -hmm. Initially, we had a challenge of um, numbers because, because people are not aware out there. Now we have the opposite challenge because <laughs> now we have uh, the awareness is there and the students actually have taken it up so well through what we call internal assessors. In our school, we have internal assessors mm -hmm. who actually help us as, as each other. Every year, we choose a new crop of internal assessors. So we have a lot of, like I told you, we have 244 yeah. currently. So you can imagine, and of course, we need to monitor this. I think Maria has talked about monitoring, and it's, it's, it's evidence-based. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and I, I always say as a teacher, students don't do what the teacher expects. They do what the teacher inspects. So I have, to, I have to check to see that they did it. And so 244. Uh, fortunately, also, we have, I, I, we have uh, teachers coming up. We have so many volunteers coming up. And we are in the process of now allocating particular students mm -hmm. to particular teachers so that you have a smaller number to deal with. Because mm -hmm. now you can imagine you have to go through 244 mm -hmm. and also prepare a lesson plan at the same time to go and teach. Uh, so it, it, it's, a, it's quite a challenge. But we are working on that now. We, it's a challenge that brings opportunity in itself. Because now, the bigger the number, uh -huh. the more people you need on board. And like I said, we have volunteer teachers. Yeah. So we are, we, are, we are working on how to allocate that so that we have smaller groups that we can actually deal with. Uh -huh. Secondly, we also have, um, it's, a con it's a, an ongoing challenge uh -huh. about awareness inside of the parents. Uh -huh. Because we have had uh, uh, people who 
know one aspect of the program, uh -huh. like uh, the one of expedition. Most people know about expedition. Uh -huh. Actually, I knew about the expedition myself before I knew anything else. Uh -huh. So uh, having to, to bring the mind of these people that the award is not just about the expedition. Actually, you call it adventurous journey. The word is not just that weekend or something to go hiking. It's actually a continuous thing because it's about growth. And you can't just learn leadership overnight. You can't learn resilience overnight. It takes, uh, that's why it takes a period of time for a particular level, like six months for bronze. In these six months, if somebody is offering service to someone, they learn a lot. If somebody is learning a skill, if somebody is doing a physical activity, they interact with the others. So they grow through the six months rather than the one off. Mm -hmm. So my biggest challenge has been trying to bring everybody on board about the whole program, not just one aspect of it. I, I, I can say we are, we are seeing light at the end of the tunnel uh, about it, but that, those are the main challenges I have. Mm -hmm. But again, if there are no challenges, I wouldn't want it. What about the aspect of uh, inspiration to other students? Because uh, there is a program that, okay, not everybody in school is involved in, but what about the aspect of inspiration to other students? Because we are, we are, you are talking about improved discipline, improved uh, academics. What about the aspect of ins uh, inspiration? Yeah, so w one of the challenges maybe that my, uh, uh, Nelly will tell you is that usually you have a given number of people. You plan for 10 people. And then on the day of the activity, you find 100. <laughs> so, meaning that, okay, of course we have some different reasons. Like she talked about people running away from something. Mm -hmm. And that, that PA offers a solution, an escape. Mm -hmm. But you see, regardless of the reasons why somebody joined, through the program, they actually get on board and then start seeing the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So usually, uh, we, we, we encourage people to join for whatever reason. Once they join, they see the benefit and then they continue with it. So uh, student, student uh, inspiration is there. That's why, because, because it's, a, it's a team thing. It's not a competition, it's something you do com communally. So students normally want to follow their friends, others want to get a certificate, others, uh, for whatever reason, they, they, their parents actually inspire them because parents did this before. Mm -hmm. So we, we see a lot of that, and that's why we have those numbers I mentioned. Mm -hmm. We rarely go out there and announce we are going to have PA this and PA that. But through the students, they inspire the others. Yes. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, like I said, whatever the reason that they joined, because of their friends or whatever, it's good for us because we create awareness. Mm -hmm. So they are really, really inspired. Actually, like I said earlier in our school, PA is like a culture. Yeah. It's like a cult. Yes. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to, uh, to join in. Yeah. yeah, so I can say that the evidence is there for yes. inspiration. Maria, do you monitor or follow up students after they are done with their studies and they have go, uh, undergone through the program? Yes, we have a CRM system mm -hmm. to which we try and get feedback from as many young people as possible who have gone through the program just to see where they are. Mm -hmm. And one of the immediate positive effects that we've seen about the program is once they finish, especially in high school, they get into universities. Some of them get sponsored and a lot of students actually use this for their university applications to get into especially certain universities of their interest. So the program, remember I said, is also on a global scale. So it really gives them that added advantage. Mm -hmm. Also in terms of employability also, it really gives them an added advantage. Mm -hmm. Remember we said we are a character building and mm -hmm. self-development program. So the most important thing we see is the young people that we take out there, the type of people they become when they're out there in the space of um, employability and entrepreneurship. So I think the program has a greater impact to young people. Mm -hmm. And remember, there's a very specific reason why we choose the ages between 14 and 24. We are nurturing them. These yeah. are tra transformative years of young people. So it is intentional that we start as young as 14 mm -hmm. so that we can set them up for life very early. And it's a journey. It's a journey of self-discovery. So young people really discover who they are, their talents, their capabilities, mm -hmm. and they live without limits yes. yes talk about the upcoming gold uh, yes award, yes yes so we have an upcoming gold award ceremony at state house on the 17th of october and you can see that this program actually is even a national level it shows you the government's commitment towards empowering young people the government's commitment towards young people okay. so we have the gold award ceremony in state house the president's award the patron is the pe the president um i forgot to mention that this award program has been there since 1966 so it really has a rich heritage so every incoming president automatically becomes a patron of the of the organi of the award and that just shows the commitment that we've had through the government when it comes to supporting young people for so many years all right and um, you're a gold award holder yeah when you were being awarded that what 
went through your mind and what does that mean for you? What does that award mean for you? Uh, what went through my mind? I was so excited. First of all, it was my first time coming to Nairobi. Oh. <laughs> 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 Going to State House, greeting the president. I, I, a lot was running in my mind. I was so excited. Yeah. As a young girl, I was so happy. And um, I made a commitment to use that certificate to better myself. Mm -hmm. Actually, my mom and the award leader, they have always told me, what are you doing with that certificate, Nelly? What are you doing? Because everyone around me saw how it shaped me. Mm -hmm. So even when, when I finished high school, I intentionally never went for international university, even though I qualified through the certificate, because I wanted people to to feel the passion that I have for the award. And getting to Kenyatta University, dealing with comrades, you know, mm -hmm. comrades, these are adults. You can't call people for these activities and they just show up. You really have to convince them, you know, there's this benefit, there's these other benefits, and not everyone gets mm -hmm. to understand the importance of the program. So I would say I chose to be a volunteer with the award to get to, to market it and sell it out to as many people as I can. As a teacher, every, uh, the schools that I have gone for my teaching practice and teaching practicum, CBC, I have uh, inducted the program. Mm -hmm. And I have seen students taking it up, and it just gives me fulfillment that people now can have the opportunity to better themselves. Okay. And I would say I have seen how the skill section, to be particular, it has, it has helped People that, I ha that have done the award, they get to create jobs for themselves. So you, you find you're there, you're doing your course, but you still have something that you're doing. I have seen participants doing makeup and they get 300 out of a face, a, a face bit from a client. So I have seen how it's, it's helping to change even some of the universal problems that youths and young people are facing okay. in our nation. Okay. Yeah. As we close, let me start with you. Your parting shot. <laughs> My parting shot is um, I would love to welcome everyone to join this award. As, as we've discussed, it's open to everyone, regardless of your background, your religion, wherever you are, it's, it's free. Like you, can, you can come, you can join it, and you can run with this opportunity. You can use it for your own personal development, your skill development, and just I just wish youths would have some, some safe space to run to, other than sit down there and say, you know, things are not running, the government is doing, yet we have a program that can actually embrace you, your thoughts, your values, whatever you believe in, you can put it into practice. And the beauty of it all is that you get to be awarded. So, yeah, I would say it's a good opportunity for you to run with the program. Yes. Molibon, inspire student. Uh, yes, they only need a lesson plan. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, anyway, I, 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 you know, we, we, we understand that all of us yeah. uh, are, are products of some environment. We grew up in an environment. We faced some circumstances. Mm -hmm. We had people who were mentoring us or not mentoring us. So mm -hmm. that's what built us, everybody. And I, I think right now it, it, it is our responsibility mm -hmm. as uh, adults, as teachers, as managers, as whoever we are. Mm -hmm. it, we have a duty to the young generation. The duty is to provide those, that environment that, that they can thrive in, yeah. to provide those circumstances, to be those mentors that will make them stand on their own. Because like, like I always say, I, I, and I repeat it here, we, we have not inherited this world from our parents. Uh -huh. We have borrowed it from our children. Yes. And therefore, these children that we talk about here, you know they are the future of this country. Yeah. Any country's future is the, is, is the young people. Yeah. So PA provides that opportunity, that environment uh, to nurture these people. Yes. And that's why I am so passionate about this. We need to put all hands on, on deck. We need to work. And it's our responsibility, actually. Yes. Let's mentor these young people. Yes. Thank you. Maria. Thank you. I would just like to echo what Nelly and uh, Bernard have said, I really want to encourage young people to join the program. I want to encourage parents, let your young people join this program, support them, stakeholders. We work very closely with the Ministry of Education and the TSC. We also just want to encourage every young person to do this program. I also want to challenge young people. This is your world, this is your opportunity. 
for you to build tomorrow, it has to start today. Uh -huh. And you have to take the responsibility of how you want to build yourself. The power is in you. Uh -huh. So discover yourself, go through this journey, yes. and you will be surprised how much you will be able to be limitless. So I really want to encourage young people, believe in yourself. Uh, what we see in young people, they don't see in themselves. So I want young people to really, really embrace who they are, and I encourage them to go without any limits. Um, I also want as many people to join the program. You can contact us through the President's Award, through our social media, through our website, please. We want young people to join the program. Teachers, contact us. We will onboard your schools into the program. We also have the Gold Award Ceremony coming up on the 17th of October. We want to encourage you to follow us on our social media so you can get updates on that ceremony. All right. So thank you. All right. That was our time. And thank you for making time to come to Good Morning Kenya and talk about celebrating the young achievers through the President's Award. That is uh, Maria Birgen, who is the acting CEO of the President's Award. Bernard Ayako, who is a teacher and an award leader uh, at uh, Oshual Junior High School. And also Nelly Anyawera, who is a gold award holder and volunteer with the President's uh, Awards. This is where we cap this conversation. My name is Mike Miku. Thank you for tuning in. Here's the weather report.